Hi, I'm Ted Wolf, presented by Guidewise. Welcome to the Implementers Podcast, where we connect you to the stories and insights of people who have mastered implementation. Why? Because ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. Join us as we uncover the secrets of successful implementation so you can conquer your implementation struggles. Welcome to the Implementers Podcast presented by Guidewise, where we focus on the topic of implementation because ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. Today, my guest is Josh Mayer from Josh Mayer Golf. Welcome, Josh. Thanks for having me. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce a little bit about what you've done in the last couple of years, which I am so impressed with. You have 1.6 million viewers on TikTok. You got a hundred thousand plus on YouTube now. That is an unbelievable accomplishment. So I sit back and I'm intrigued. What is your typical day? What does your typical day look like and what do you do? Hmm. Um, so yeah, my typical day, honestly, majority of my days are spent editing content. Um, okay. I would say every day does look a little bit different, but um, I would say uh, any given week, I probably film one or two days a week. I'm out on the course, on the golf course, actually filming content. Um, and then pretty much uh, every day outside of that, I am sitting at a desk editing, uh, doing voiceover, um, so yeah, a lot less glamorous. I spend a lot less time on a golf course than you would think. Mm -hmm. It's mostly, mostly editing. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Okay. So let's unpack that and dig into that a little bit. You get an idea. You want to develop the idea. Do you ever get stage fright about, do I really pursue this idea or don't I? And, uh, what if it doesn't work? Does that ever go through your head? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I've tried to set some stuff up in place of like, when I do have an idea, I can run it through these checkpoints of, you know, whether it actually goes to the point where I'm filming it. Um, the first one specifically for YouTube, the first one is, um, whether or not it'll be a good title or a thumbnail. So on YouTube, the, the probably the most important thing about your video is the actual thumbnail photo. Um, and then second to that is a, a, a title. And so, um, if I'm thinking of ideas and, I can't think of a mm -hmm. thumbnail or a title in my head. I mean, I, yeah, pretty much just throw that one out. Um, but when I do, oh, interesting. when I do think of a, a good idea and, you know, I can see a title and a thumbnail in my head and I think people will be interested in it and, and click on it. Um, then it kind of goes to the next step of like, okay, you know, can I actually film this? Do I have to travel somewhere to film this? Um, can I do it, you know, here where I live in Texas? Um, and then, if that's also a yes, then it's like, okay, let's, you know, actually sit down and, and start planning out like what, what that video is going to look like. And, um, I would say there's always a little bit of concern, um, like starting a new series or, or having an idea, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just because, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of work to, to make videos. And, and uh, like I said, spend a lot of time editing and stuff. So, um, if you do put all that work in and it's a new thing and you put it out and it doesn't do well, then it's kind of like, okay, you know, sure. you just put all that work in, hopefully not for nothing, but yeah. it, it so, totally seems like, yeah. So once you have an idea and I'm going to dig into that more in a moment, but let's say you have an idea, you go through all the production, you go through all the editing and everything, and it's time to hit that publish button. What does that five second lifespan before you push that publish button feel like and what thoughts go through your head? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, so I, um, other creators have talked about this, but um, they kind of compare YouTube and social media to playing the lottery. And mm -hmm. every time you click that publish button, it's like taking another spin on the wheel um, mm -hmm. and it could hit and, literally every video you post has the ability to change your life. It's essentially mm -hmm. like it could, mm -hmm. you know, go insanely viral and your life could never be the same, you know, after that. And so, um, it's a little bit addicting. I would say pushing the publish button and things doing well and, um, having that potential is definitely, there's a little bit of an addiction there. Um, I think mm -hmm. a lot of content mm -hmm. creators would agree with you on that. Mm 
Yeah, yeah. So let's go back and talk about getting an idea. A lot of people, bloggers, they're always watching TV. They read newspapers. They do their own way of researching. In fact, I've talked to some bloggers who actually say, I, I go out and just get by myself. I take a long walk or I just I have a routine that I specifically do go over. Do you have a routine or how do you go about finding your ideas? Yeah. Um, I guess the first off, honestly, my mind just like never turns off from, from thinking about mm -hmm. YouTube ideas and stuff. It's just tough for me to turn it off. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say the, the, the main way I get most of my ideas is watching YouTube and watching other larger creators, sometimes smaller creators in different niches mm -hmm. and seeing mm -hmm. what they do, seeing what works and then trying to apply that to the niche of golf. So, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's typically okay. how I get most of my ideas. Okay, so do you factor in when you're thinking of that fundamental, I'm going to call it subject line or the video that tunes everything together, do you look at it as part humor, part serious, part jest? Um, what's, what are you trying to get across? What do you strive for so that when you do come up with that, key opening video it's like yeah i got it that's it that's the sweet spot yeah i think i would say my like style of content or, or what i enjoy making is um stuff that's definitely like creative things that you know people wouldn't necessarily immediately think of i like <laughs> coming up with ideas that might be a little bit outside the box um and then yeah i would say there's definitely uh, I, I lean towards, you know, comedy being a little bit funnier. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, at the end of the day, I think I, I enjoy watching, you know, comedic content. I'm not a big like serious like drama type guy. I, you know, I like lighthearted um, things. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of with YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, you can kind of create your own world and um, what you find funny and what you find interesting. You can you know portray in your content. So that's that's kind of what comes out to you. Okay. Okay. So. I don't know if that answers we said question, ideas, but yeah, absolutely. We opened the show by the episode by saying that ideas are easy. Implementation is hard. Let's talk about how you implemented a change in your life called, I'm going to start my own business and not work for someone else. Yeah. That's a huge question. That's a, there's only what 42 inches in the width of a desk or something like that. So you go from one side of the desk to the other, but it's a world of difference. We all, anybody that's made that decision knows that. How did you come in your mind to say, okay, I'm going out on my own and I'm going to see if I can make this happen. How did that, what was that process like the experience? So it was, it was a little, little bit of an interesting story there. Um, my second job out of college was working for a YouTube channel. So it was a motorcycle YouTube channel, um, mm -hmm. pretty successful. And they were uh, like 2 million subscribers. You know, it was a, a pretty large business in the, in the sense of like a creator business. Um, and I wasn't, I didn't do anything on the content side. I, I was all products. So we had private label products that we sold on Amazon and Shopify. Um, and so I managed all that, but I was around content all day. And so, um, was constantly just, you know, hearing about YouTube's out. I, I was in some of the videos and then, you know, we were always, um, coming up with ideas and stuff. And so I was in that mm -hmm. process a little bit and kind of fell in love with it and started learning more about content while I was there. Um, I was super interested in golf at the time while I was working. And so on the weekends and after work, that's when I started um, posting videos on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and then a few months in, I had uh, a couple videos like do really well on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, my boss uh, was happy for me, but also at the same time wanted me to be all in at his yeah. company. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was given an ultimatum basically. And he said, Hey, you can, you know, keep doing what you're doing and posting. Um, and I'll give you three months to figure it out and then you can go do your own thing or you can stop posting and you can keep working for me. And so, um, I chose to bet on myself and I, yeah. I knew I always wanted to, to start my own thing at some point. And so, um, so that seemed like a good time. So he kind of gave me a little bit of a nudge. I wasn't yeah. too happy about it at the time. Um, but, yeah, I guess it, it did kind of work out. So. Well, I think it worked out very well for you. So yeah. <laughs> did you always did you always have the business bug? Did you always think, well, I want to get my own thing here and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I love consuming content. I love listening to podcasts. So I've always listened to How I Built This is like my favorite podcast. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, listening to entrepreneurs and idealists, you know, starting businesses and trying to find a gap in the market or um, entertain people or whatever that is. I, I definitely always had yeah. an interest in that. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. So did you like the entertaining when you were younger in front of people and things like that? Or was this more like Josh, who started a business and mowing lawns, shoveling snow, delivering newspapers in the old days, I'll say things like that. Did you always have an inclination was always tinkering with a business or an idea in some way? For sure. Yeah. I was always, um, you know, yeah, mowing lawns in high school. And then actually in college, me and my buddy, uh, went a little bit further and started our own, uh, landscaping business. And we would, hmm. you know, go around and hand out flyers and stuff. And, uh, learned how to use like QuickBooks for the first time doing that. And good, um, good for so, you. Yeah, that's definitely always had a little bit. Um, as far as entertaining goes, I wouldn't say I've, you know, I was never one to want attention on me or anything. Um, I think I've kind of, I've had to break out of my shell a little bit as far as that. And, um, yeah, learn how to do that, honestly, which I, I was always kind of a shy kid. So that's kind of like the challenge, the, uh, the conflict inside. And uh, it's interesting because in your videos, you're very comfortable and very natural in front of a camera. So I think well, you've gone a long way in being able to develop that skill set. Congratulations. I appreciate um, that. <laughs> who would, when you did a video and you said the first one or two in the beginning took off, how did that feel when you saw the numbers creeping up hourly or daily or weekly and you looked in the mirror and said, oh my God, is this really happening? What was that experience like? Yeah, that was, that was pretty wild too, because it was, um, it was kind of right at the start of, I guess, COVID, um, in 2021 or end of 2020, 2021. Um, and yeah, I mean, it kind of goes back to that lottery feeling where, um, I had been working at a YouTube channel, so I knew how valuable an audience could be and what that looks yeah. like and, you know, how to create a business around that. And so, um, having those first couple of videos blow up, it, you know, it, it got pretty real pretty quick. And, you know, I probably jumped ahead of myself, but I was, you know, calling people, figuring out, should I be selling merch right now? And, you know, it's like day yeah. two and I'm trying to figure out like how to monetize yeah. already. And luckily I didn't, I didn't do anything then. I just kind of settled in and said, you know, I'm just going to keep, keep making good content and just keep figuring that out. And then we'll, you know, figure out how to turn this into an actual business. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Who is your target market? Who's your target audience that you're going after? Yeah, I mean, my, my target market is like 18 to 45 year old males that play golf. Honestly, that's kind of the, that's, mm -hmm. if you look at all my analytics, that's, that's my target market. Okay. So, um, I spent uh, a lot of time doing research, as I mentioned to you before we started recording here. And there were a couple of videos that stood out that I love and a couple of ideas. And I have one, one question I want to ask you. You do it a series, I think, on the world's or the a state's worst golf courses, which I thought was a fabulous creative idea. How'd you come up with that idea? Yeah, so there's um, there's another YouTuber. His name's Ryan Tran. Um, he's a big, okay. maybe 10 million subscribers on YouTube. And um, he has done a couple of videos uh, going into the worst rated hotels and the worst rated um, amusement okay. parks and things like that. And so, um, I love his videos and I thought it would be fun to kind of relate what he does to golf and, uh, yeah, go play the worst rated courses. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was really, really good. <laughs> Do you ever get writer's block when you're in the middle of producing an idea and saying, where can it go? What do I do next? Or do you ever get, um, uh, do you ever find yourself in the experience when you're in the middle of creating and developing an idea where all of a sudden it takes off in three different tangents or three different areas and say, how do I bring all these ideas back together? Does that ever happen? Yeah, I think um, for me, the the hardest part of um, like the ideation process, I, I, I do a pretty good job, I think, coming up with like the general concept, the general idea. Um, mm -hmm. the hardest part for me is really nailing down, like, what is the storyline here? Cause I, ideally mm -hmm. I want every single video to have some sort of story, um, where mm -hmm. there's, you know, a, a beginning, middle, end, or act one, act two, act three. Um, yeah. and that it, in my mind, it, for some reason doesn't work that way. So I, I kind of have to really work hard to, to figure out, okay, um, how do we set this up as an actual story to keep people watching and, and keep people engaged? 
Uh, mm-hmm. So I'd say that's that's probably my biggest struggle in, in the ideation process. Okay, so when you're going through the idea then, how many ideas do you go through before one actually hits a TikTok, a YouTube, and Instagram? Yeah, um, I would probably say like two out of 10 ideas. I mean, honestly, I'm always thinking of ideas. I'm always throwing stuff out. I'm always, you know, mm-hmm. um, calling friends or other YouTubers and, you know, saying, how, what do you think? Mm-hmm. How do you think this video idea sounds or whatever? And so, um, definitely plenty of ideas, but yeah, I would say probably only, you know, one or two out of the 10 that I come up with actually, you know, see the light of day. Okay. Okay. So once you hit that button and it's off and it's gone on its own, do you ever look back and critique them? Do you ever actually then afterwards, do you watch yourself in the video and do you, what do you do with the old videos that are just a year or two old then? What do you do with those? Yeah. So, um, most social media apps, uh, and YouTube specifically does a really good job with this of you can, um, you can see your analytics on the back end of the video. So mm-hmm. probably the number one thing that I do, um, on YouTube is look at the, um, the average view duration chart. So the biggest, the the biggest thing with YouTube is being able to get people to watch a video for, you know, as long as you possibly can get them Mm -hmm. to watch for. Um, Mm -hmm. and so there's a chart after your video is posted and it will show you, you know, where people jump off the video or, you know, um, Mm -hmm. where people might stay and there might be a, a, an uptick in, in people staying on the video for that specific moment. And so, um, Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I learned from that uh, is um, you can see, you know, what things you did in the video that made yeah. people jump off the video. So obviously yeah. don't do those things anymore. And then what made people exactly. stay. And so do more of those yeah. things. So that's, um, and you can, you know, from videos that I posted three years ago, I can still look at those and still glean things from those that are, yeah. yeah work today so in effect what you're doing is you're looking at your inventory of videos and you're watching their metrics if i can use that business term and you're looking and saying okay if i want to implement and create a good video here i got to take out okay what are people watching and what's making them leave so that's basically guiding my ideation and creation and the creativity within what's going on and that's how you basically stay relevant to your audience i'm going to assume exactly yep yeah okay so How do you think AI is going to affect your business in the future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, It already has, honestly. I I use um, the majority of AI tools that I use are just for uh, creating thumbnails. So Photoshop Mm -hmm. has like a generative AI feature um, that works pretty well if you're trying to um, add something into the picture or um, you know, maybe you forgot to take a picture of a certain thing while you were there in person and mm-hmm. you can kind of come up with that on using that feature on AI. Um, mm-hmm. so that's probably the, the number one, like most practical use for AI at this point. Um, but then on YouTube, there's been a, a huge uptick in, um, just fully autonomous YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically people, most of them are like informational YouTube channels. So people put mm-hmm. in, um, a prompt and say, I, you know, I want a 10 minute video about Tiger Woods and, um, uh, and basically mm-hmm. it spits out a video and then they'll post it. And, um, uh, I've seen a lot of the channels like grow and do well. Uh, I, I know there's like, I know YouTube is trying to stay away from that. I think they're mm-hmm. not able to make as much money as, you know, a, a normal channel, but, um, it's definitely changing the landscape of just like the whole creator economy, I guess is what they call it. So, mm-hmm. so <clears throat> creating a loyal following of engaged viewers, what are you looking to do in the future? Just do you have your formula down or are you trying to create a new one? And how are you going to, I'm going to say, do you have any thoughts about diversifying? Do you go into other golf related types of topics and things like that? Yeah, I think, um, I guess my, my thought in like creating an audience, or I think the, the value in creating an audience, um, initially I kind of thought of it as like reverse engineering a business where typically, um, a business, you know, has a service or a product and mm-hmm. then they go try to find customers to sell that business or to sell that service or product to. Um, whereas with, 
creating an audience, you're kind of flipping that around where you're finding your customer, you're finding the audience, and then maybe finding mm-hmm. out from them what product uh, mm-hmm. they want to buy or what you know would would fit uh, their needs. And so, mm-hmm. um, I, that for me, that is definitely uh, a my end goal as far as like the business goes and creating a long term um, business is is mm-hmm. finding out okay can I create a product that you know is, is a good product and fills the needs of you know my audience that are golfers and um, luckily I'm in a niche like golf where um, mm-hmm. yeah it's there's a lot of opportunity there as far as products go and so yeah um, I would say yeah. that's that's probably the first thing that I'll do as far as like differentiating. Um, but yeah, for now, honestly, my, my goal is to just make the best possible videos I can make. And then, um, typically, you know, the other stuff takes care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. So looking back in your social media experience, what were some of the mistakes you made early on with social media? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think mistakes. I think, um, a big, maybe one of the larger mistakes I made early on was, um, not like taking the time to come up with, with really good ideas. I think it was more, I I was a little bit eager to just post, just get stuff out there, which I think can be good in in some senses of like, Mm -hmm. if somebody is having an issue, just posting in the first place, like just film it and post it and whatever Mm -hmm. from that. But um, I was kind of already posting and doing stuff. And um, I think I could have taken more time to come up with really good creative ideas and, um, and maybe not as post quite posted quite as much, but yeah. you know, have all those videos be really good. And then you have, you know, a backlog of those videos. Um, and so I, I wish I would have started doing that maybe a little bit earlier on. Uh, mm-hmm. but that's kind of well, where I'm at now. Well, so. well one of the things you can always do the blooper, so to speak, that people do sure. with their early yeah. content yeah. and early things. So For sure. <clears throat> we all have that type of uh, experience. How do you stay in touch with your community? Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just comments and responding to direct messages. And I mean, it sounds simple, but um, literally just replying to every single person that comments on your video or um, responding to every message that you get. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's, like at the end of the day, like it's, I'm, you know, putting myself out there to, to build a community and to try and relate to these, you know, people who are following me or find mm-hmm. what I'm doing somewhat interesting. And so, um, you know, that's, that's the point of it. It's social media. It's, it's for me to interact with people. And so, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. responding, mm-hmm. responding to comments and, and DMs. Yeah, for sure. And then another big one is, is, um, doing live streams. So I haven't done a ton of them okay. yet, but, um, yeah, I really want to get into doing more live streams and kind of, uh, that's a, a great way to, to get involved with your audience. Cause it's kind of just like a live conversation you can have with, with your audience. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be great. Be interested to follow you in doing that. Um, what would you do differently if you had your business to start over? Um, I guess, I guess probably similar to, to what I said before of, um, I would probably, really, really think about, um, like the direction I would want to take my channels and my YouTube channels, uh, mm-hmm. before I posted anything and, and maybe come up with a catalog of content of maybe like, you know, several months worth of stuff and then, mm-hmm. you know, um, launch a really good video and then, you know, have more videos, really good videos mm-hmm. directly after that to, to do that. Um, you know, easier said than done, but, um, I, I think I've, I've seen people now like launching YouTube channels and just starting out from the get go of mm-hmm. you know, full steam ahead. Um, mm-hmm. and so I, I, th- I think I probably took a little bit more time to get to the point of where I'm at now of just, um, just kind of nonchalantly, maybe a little bit posting some mm-hmm. stuff and just seeing if it works and whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, so you that, have that, a that content. Do you have a content calendar that you go by? Do you have like a production schedule and saying, hey, I need three weeks, you know, um, booked and ready to go and it's all timed on itself now? Uh, How do you handle that type of thing? I I would say I'm pretty fluid. I think I'm I'm probably as far as like 
ideas and, and videos that I know I'm going to film. I'm maybe like a month out, but realistically not much more than that. It's kind of tough um, to plan in this mm-hmm. industry and what I'm doing. Cause um, yeah, even, even like paid opportunities and stuff like that, like, you know, they might pop up in a, a week in sure. advance or two weeks in advance. And so sure. um, it's really tough to, to get a clear schedule or like look six months ahead or anything like that. Yeah. So putting collaborators together, uh, people who uh, work with you, sponsors, things like that. Tell me a little bit about the process that you go through. How do you identify them? How do you put them together? How do you match the brand with their brand, your brand with their brand, things like that? What are your considerations in that area? Yeah. So, um, so I work with, I uh, currently work with uh, a sports agent. So he's a, um, hmm. he has an agency and represents a lot of golfers and golf YouTubers, um, as well as like some football players and athletes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of the main, the main way I get connected with brands. Um, and yeah, I would say it's nice cause I'm very much in a niche, like in, in the golf niche. And so it makes it a lot easier uh, for mm-hmm. brands to, you know, know exactly, you know, what yeah. return they're going to get as far as sponsoring me. So, um, and it's, you know, I can also then ask for more money because I have a concentrated audience. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone who follows me, you know, obviously has something, some interest in golf. And so, um, it fits their products really well. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of nice being in a niche where, uh, golf is the main focus and it's easier to get brands to, um, to come alongside you. Okay. So doing my homework, I saw you in a video and you were actually shaving your beard so you could show your dad you had a mustache and it was with Phillips Norelco one blade. Yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did that come about? Um, so they actually reached out to me. So they were um, doing a campaign and okay. um, obviously their target market is right sure. in the same sweet spot as mine, 18 to 45 year old men that can grow beards. I'm not going to say that I can really grow that great of a beard, but, um, yeah, so that, that kind of fit well. And, um, yeah, they were awesome to work with. Obviously I, I had already used their product as well. So, um, that was kind of a, a no brainer. Okay. So let's go back to balancing business with personal life. You said that you're that type of person, 24 hours a day, you're on, you're thinking of ideas, you're experimenting, you're looking, you're, you're exploring different ideas through different, uh, different uh, I'm saying markets and what other people are doing and how you would apply them. So how do you keep that in balance? How do you keep that focus? So you say, okay, I got to take some time away. I got to walk away from it. How do you do that? Yeah. Good question. Um, if you have any answers on that, you, you let me know. Cause uh, <laughs> I, I can't say that uh, I do the best job at that. Um, I would say right now I try to for sure take, Sundays off. I just, you know, try not to do any mm-hmm. editing or working on Sundays. Um, and then outside of that, it is, it is kind of nice because I do, I can create my own schedule and I can, you know, I work from home. And so, mm-hmm. um, I do have the luxury of like, you know, if my wife Maggie wants to go out to lunch at some point, like we can, I can, yeah. you know, leave my editing desk and we can go out to lunch. So we kind of fit in, um, I guess our lives or things like that uh, in different times that, mm-hmm. that normal people would, if you're working at nine to five, um, yeah. as far as like me being able to turn it off or um, anything like that, it's, it's, it is really tough. It's, it's really tough, to yeah. especially with social media because it's, you know, everything's moving so fast. Um, yeah. and everything's kind of, um, yeah, just, yeah, just quick. That's just the, the nature of, of the beast, I guess. So, when you're doing your editing um, and you're getting those dopamine hits and that boy, they're really firing off and you're feeling great. And then you find out a new technology like an AI or something like that, maybe uh, new editing equipment, you got to implement some change in your life. How do you go about making that change and implementing that change in the business to new editing, new technology, new ideas, things like that? Yeah, I think, um, honestly watching a lot of YouTube videos of, of figuring mm-hmm. stuff out. I feel like, um, okay. if, if I do get a new piece of equipment or anything like that, I'll, you know, t- 
typically spend a full day trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, cause also you don't want to be your first time using new equipment, like while you're out actually trying to shoot a video. And so, um, yeah. I try and do as much research as I possibly can. Luckily, um, I pretty much have everything I need at this point. I'm, I'm kind of to the point where as far as equipment goes, like I'm, I'm good on that, but, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I really answered your question there, but yeah. um, no, no, fine. So, watching you do your videos, you're obviously good at the game of golf. You have a lot of talent that, uh, or you would not be able to do the tricks and the techniques that you use. So, my last question is, how's your golf game? <laughs> um, honestly, probably not <laughs> as good as it should be. <laughs> um, I think people you're too busy working. Yeah, right. I think people have a little bit of a misconception that uh, I just, you know, go to the golf course every day and just hit golf balls and just the videos magically appear online. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, contrary to what people think, I, I spend maybe one day a week actually like playing or practicing golf, sometimes less than that. And so um, I try and keep up with it a little bit just so I don't look you know, so I'm not shooting, you know, a hundred on mm -hmm. videos or whatever, but mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, realistically, I, I probably should be better at this point <laughs> than, than what I am, but uh, good enough to get by, I guess, with the style of videos that, that I film. So, <laughs> well, what I would say to you is doing the tricks. It doesn't look like you're only playing golf once a week. That's so. good. So I have you. Uh -oh. good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> you, you definitely do. I was pretty <laughs> impressed. That's for sure. But that doesn't say a lot about my golf game then I guess either. <laughs> So, uh, okay. My guest today was Josh Mayer with Josh Mayer golf and uh, congratulations on building a real nice business here. You are one of the early people in it. You've got a great following and, uh, I asked people to go to Josh Mayer golf, subscribe on YouTube, go to TikTok, Instagram, Josh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Ted Wolf here. I want to thank you for joining us for this Implementers video. The Implementers podcast is presented by Guidewise, where we, along with our vetted member community, recognize that ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. To learn more about getting things done with Guidewise, please visit us at guidewise.io. And to conquer your implementation struggles, please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy implementing.